Welcome in everyone to the best off-season dynasty content you can get anywhere. This time, we have our top five dynasty buys going into the off-season. Let's start with buy number one, Dalton Kincaid. <laughs> I think recency bias might eat people alive with Dalton Kincaid. Essentially, we're talking about a player who had a season in three phases. Phase one. <laughs> Before Dawson Knox got hurt, he had 3.4 catches, 23.6 yards per game. Then Dawson Knox got hurt. Kincaid erupted. Six and a half catches, 59.3 yards per game. Then Knox returned, and Kincaid fell to two and a half receptions and 28.8 yards per game and a lower snap share than he did when Knox was out. Overall, though, Kincaid has 66 catches for 589 yards and two touchdowns in 15 games. That's excellent for a rookie tight end. We have to understand that, you know, don't be spoiled by Sam Laporta. Not everyone is going to be Sam Laporta. You have guys like Trey McBride who did nothing as rookies and then are breaking out in their second year. So this is great statistics for a rookie tight end. Next year, Gabe Davis is a free agent. Stefan Diggs. You can tell me he's going to be back, but he's not going to be. They're, they're not getting along there. So Kincaid's going to have to step up into a larger role. Just this last week, he led the team in re um, receiving four catches for 87 yards on seven targets. So it's not like he's phased out of their plans. Right now, his ADP, tight end four. His current rank at DLF, tight end six. That seems a little outdated. Uh, I have him tight end three. Here's a couple of recent trades to acquire Dalton Kincaid. You could have gotten him for Travis Kelsey a few weeks back. There's no way that happens now. Another trade, Dalton Kincaid for Brian Robinson. I can't imagine a format where that's realistic. But I decided to give you a couple of hypothetical ideas of my own. Dalton Kincaid for George Kittle. Maybe someone sees George Kittle's production and wants the veteran. And then another one, it's probably more likely, you can send David Njoku and a mid-24 second for Dalton Kincaid and get the higher upside long-term option. Let's move into uh, the next buy, Drake London. <laughs> now, Drake London, I think, has been frustrating for people because they expected a massive breakout. But despite the perception, London's actually been better this year than he was last year. He has 4.3 catches per game compared to 4.2 and 57.6 yards a game compared to 50.9. Now. That is not a massive improvement. But I would say that his quarterback play has been even worse this year. Whatever Marcus Mariota was, he was actually better than what Desmond Ritter has offered this year, which has been really bad. Additionally, I think the reason that Drake London has not gotten the hype is that he's only scored six touchdowns in his career, and only two this year, four of them in his rookie year. He's bound for positive touchdown regression when he falls into an offense that isn't broken. His current ADP is wide receiver 22. That's way too low. Current DLF rank among the rankers, wide receiver 13. I have him wide receiver 14. So very similar to the expert rankers, way higher than the ADP. Here are some recent real trades that occurred with Drake London. And all these are from the DLF trade finder, if I didn't mention it earlier. You could acquire Drake London for Jonathan Taylor. And in Dynasty, I would definitely prefer Drake London. And you could also get Drake London in a fifth round pick for T. Higgins. And, you know, T. Higgins is a whole separate story, but I would still lean toward Drake London. He's younger and, you know, hasn't had some issues and isn't going to a new team. So I uh, would do those trades. And then another one, Drake London and 224 seconds for Jalen Waddell. I love Jalen Waddell, but is Jalen Waddell really that much better? He's three years older, so I would probably lean toward Drake London. However, I think you could pay even less. You might be able to get Drake London for late 24 first if someone's really sick of him. And then I always recommend trying to get rid of some running backs, Travis Etienne, Devon Achan. If you could send either of them, you can probably get Drake London plus. I would absolutely do that. Drake London is still a high-end dynasty asset for me. Now, hmm, this one. Now, I don't have the same glowing rhetoric to say about Bryce Young. Uh, I feel like people have mostly quit on him. Despite being the top overall pick, his rookie year has just been so bad that he's fallen off the radar. 59.6% completion, 12 touchdowns, uh, 17 interceptions, 
6.0 yards per attempt. Oh, wait a minute. I, I'm hearing, oh, oops. I accidentally read Trevor Lawrence's 2021 stats instead of Bryce Young's stats from this year. Now, I'm not saying that Bryce Young is going to be Trevor Lawrence, but it's fair to say that their rookie seasons are somewhat similar. Young, 59.7% completion, almost identical to Lawrence. 12, 11 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, a better ratio there, but only 5.5 yards per attempt, so worse in that metric. They're comparable. They're comparable seasons. They're not that different. It's very similar. Broken team, broken coaching staff as rookies. And Trevor Lawrence held his value at like a late second round startup pick in Superflex. Bryce Young's value feels like it's in the fifth or the sixth round, and that's just way too low. Now, I don't believe that you can like go to DLF and look at the rank or the ADP because I don't think that represents his value. I think what I see on Twitter, what I see from KTC represents Young's value a little more accurately, which is that it's in the trash can. Most people I've talked to have zero interest in Young. Analysts, you know, market, and nobody. Because of the following reasons. The Panthers offense looks terrible right now. Fair enough. The Panthers are a sad, mismanaged franchise. And the best one, no quarterback with a rookie year as bad as Young could ever succeed. Well, we know that none of those are really reasons. Offenses turn over very quickly in the NFL. Management teams and coaches, GMs are hired and fired every year. And clearly, quarterbacks with horrible rookie years, Lawrence, I mentioned, but both Mannings and Jared Goff, who was abysmal, can end up being good. It is possible. It does happen. Those were all top overall picks as well. So right now, I have Bryce Young, quarterback 16, 45th overall in Superflex. Some hypothetical trades. Maybe you could send Matthew Stafford for Bryce Young. But more likely, I think 111 to 112 in Superflex, or maybe even an early second. If someone's just done, I think you might be able to get Bryce Young for that type of value. Now, the next one, Tank Bigsby. Now, it's important to note what must buy means for a player like Bigsby because it's different than it was for the last three. At that level of player, you can't usually buy them directly. He's too low. Like, I would pay a mid-third for Bigsby, but that's probably not going to get it done. The acquisition cost to acquire Bigsby directly doesn't make sense. So the path to acquire Bigsby is a throw-in as a part of a bigger trade. And that's how you get someone like that. It's important to note, when discussing Bigsby's value, that he hasn't done much in 2023. 47 carries, 116 yards, and two touchdowns, and one catch for six yards, fumbled twice. Last week, he finally won the backup job didn't impress with 10 carries for 32 yards, but at least he was out there. Finally passed up Dearness Johnson. Again, Bigsby has third-round draft capital. You don't take players in the third round if you don't expect to use them. So the Jaguars at least expected them to be their backup running back. He had a solid college career at Auburn. He had 25 rushing touchdowns, 2,903 rushing yards, and 62 catches for 448 yards in three college seasons. That's actually really good for a college running back. Plus, he saw playing time in all three years and was an early declare. Therefore, he's still a young running back. He only turns 23 in August, so he's not old. Based on Bigby's, Bigsby's ADP and rank, he's a player I want to acquire. Current ADP, running back 49. Current DLF rank, running back 44. I have him running back 41, so a little bit high. Uh, so again, try to get him as a throw in on a bigger trade. Now, Last one, this is kind of cheating, but I wanted to remind you of this because I think this is actually the biggest buy in all of Dynasty right now, and it's 2025 first-round picks. Of course, you can always buy and sell players in Dynasty, but while you're making trades for those players, accumulating 2025 first is a good idea. This year is one of those years where the current class is considered to be very strong, and we don't hear a lot of, oh, I'm looking forward to the next year's class. That, I'm not hearing a lot of that this year. I'm not saying that the 2025 class will be amazing or that it'll even compare to the 2024 class, not necessarily. But there are good players in the first round in every class. There, there just are. There are first round offensive players taken in every NFL draft. There will be first round players taken in the 2025 draft. It happens every time. They will not be an exception. So. If I can trade an early second in 2024 for a first in 2025, I'm doing that every single time. The upside of the first is just far, far higher. 
you don't know how teams are going to do in 2024. You could think it's a late first and it ends up being an early first. So I'm always doing moves like that. I'm always acquiring first round picks, even an extra year out, because they're always valuable every single time. And I would especially look to do that on the clock of your rookie dress. But I just want to throw that out there because a lot of people are not thinking about 2025 firsts. Now, uh, if you like the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've gotten overwhelming support on these Dynasty videos. And I want to thank everyone for that because it means a lot to me that people are willing to take their time and come and watch the videos on this channel. Of course, if you want to sign up for the Patreon at patreon.com slash fantasy advice, it's the best way to support me and the channel. You can click on the link at the top right corner of the video, or which I can never seem to point to, but I always try my best. And it's also in the comments and in the show description. Patrons get to ask advanced questions for the YouTube channel, and I'll read them whether they're fantasy related or not. So this week, uh, or this time, we only have one question, so I'll get to it, and then I'll get us out of here. So our question, you're in, I thought this was good, because I am a Giants fan, for anyone who doesn't know. You're in full control of the Giants. What steps do you take in the offseason to correct this team to move towards a contender? Well, unfortunately, the Giants are probably stuck with the Daniel Jones contract. Unless they somehow get in like the top three, which is a remote possibility, but they'd have to lose and get a lot of help. They're probably not going to have access to a quarterback that, you know, probably even Jaden Daniels is not going to make it to that. So unfortunately, what I do for the Giants is I focus on trying to acquire a wide receiver with that first pick. Hopefully Marvin Harrison Jr. Probably he won't be there. So Malik Neighbors will be top of my list because that's that's what they don't have. They do not have a number one. Jalen Hyatt is a good three, a Z receiver. Wandale Robinson, a good second weapon, a slot receiver. But they don't have a number one wide receiver. So Malik Neighbors would fix that problem. And then... You know, I would have to probably look at moving on from some of those more expensive veterans. I'd probably cut Darren Waller, just let Daniel Bellinger be a cheaper option at tight end, not re-sign Saquon Barkley. You know, it's just tough. They kind of went all in this year, whatever you want to call it, didn't work out. So next year is going to be a weird year, and then they'll probably have to move on from Daniel Jones uh, and get a new quarterback for 2025. So those would be the steps that I would take. Once again, if you liked this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of my buys in the comment. If, if you disagree, let me know. If you agree, tell me. If you have recent trades involving those players, post them or any players, and I'll give you my thoughts. But until next time, I want to thank everyone for watching, and I will see you all later. Peace out.